Hello again, Gwent fans. Welcome back to another game of Real Gwent. So I'm going to play Squirtel this particular game, and my opponent Nilfgaard. Because I play Squirtel, my deck ability allows me to choose who goes first, which I think is one of the worst um, deck abilities out of all the four decks, because it was a 50-50 chance that I was going to go first anyway on a coin toss. So that's why I made my opponent go first, because it's, it's seemingly always good to make your opponent go first because then they have to play cards so they've got less card advantage as well as showing their hand a little bit faster than you so you can play a little bit more reactionary at what's going on. So I think monster deck ability is probably the best because they get effectively two free cards at the end of each round and Northern Realms is on par with that with getting one free card if they win a round. They could get none, but most of the time they'll get one for winning one round. And it could be a spy, so it's you know it's a big deal for Northern Realm. Whereas monsters, you know what it's going to be. Something that you've played. Nilfgaard's is okay, and but only if the Nilfgaard player is very smart. My opponent is very smart, and if he actually does use this effect quite a few times, where if you have the same strength, Nilfgaard win, whereas normally you both lose a gem. And he uses this to great effect because then normally you can tell two cards is what he'll have to place to beat you, but he can calculate using his card advantage, which they usually have, to just perfectly put the optimum amount of cards down. So it's really annoying. So, sorry, in this game, we actually chose to lower the deck strength even more just as an experiment. So there's two reasons I did this. We lowered the deck strength to 50, which is like the lowest you're ever going to be able to get it. Now the reason I did this is one, just to see what the game's like, see what the meta changes. It's pretty interesting. I can't wait to talk about that in a moment. But the other reason is just that a lot of cards in the game don't get played and I wanted to see them getting played. I wanted to change it up, vary it up. Now the main reason this happens is because The Witcher 3 is solely a single player experience and a progression game. So you earn these cards which are not very good and then you earn better cards. But in competitive Gwent, you're not gonna see these cards so they either need in buffing a little bit or different meta games to get them to be shown like this. So we're playing zero strength cards, two strength cards, one strength card. All these cards are basically what our entire decks are filled up with. And um, the cow is amazing here because it's actually an eight strength card and doesn't, but it takes no strength in your deck, which is really good. So one of the negatives of this is that most of the decks are gonna be the absolute same. There's not any room for maneuver. And even cross decks, Nilfgaard to Square Tower to Monster, it's gonna be a lot of similarities. You're gonna see cows being placed by both people. You're gonna see Gauntro Dim Darkness is being played by both people. You're gonna see a lot of the similar cards being played. The Spy, uh, the Hero Spy, such like that. Now one of the most interesting meta game changes that lowered deck strength entails is that because a lot of cards are 1 to 4 strength, that's pretty much as high as you're going to get. Morale boost abilities, where it pluses 1 to everyone on that row, is really effective. Because it adds 1 to all of them, which is a lot. 1 strength is actually quite a lot. Um, Unit abilities are also very effective. Uh, bonded being really good. Morale boost. Muster being really good as well. Another thing that's interesting is that certain special cards are not as effective as they used to be. Commander's Horns, while still being pretty effective, are not nowhere near as effective as they used to be because you're only doubling one strength to two or maybe two to four. So it's not a bigger deal. Scorches are less used because we're both going to have similar strength cards here, whereas Nilfgaard normally have like 10 strength and I normally have like 6 or 5 as Squirtail. Weather effects are probably not going to be used as much because lowering a deck strength, uh, a card strength from 2 to 1 is not really worth it. A lot of really cool, interesting changes this kind of metagame enforces on you. So my leader ability as that I chose as Squirtel was to gain one card at the beginning of the game. Now that may seem really good because I get card advantages, right? 11 cards, right? 
But it's not really true because you don't get to play your hero ability. So my opponent in the future will get to use the turn playing his hero ability, but I don't get to do that. So I have 11 cards, so I have one more card, but I get one less turn. So it kind of mixes itself together there. So let me talk about the game. I had to get through all that. I really, I really wanted to get through all that because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in this game. Right, so I had to choose between placing Gauntro Dim Darknesses for four strength on the range row or those dwarves for three strength on the melee row. Now, I made a huge mistake, personally. I thought the Gauntro Dim Darknesses were melee, but they weren't, and that's a big deal to me because I was, I was getting ready to utilize that dandelion with them, but apparently not. So we got myself a Bovine Defense Force. Really good card, I'm surprised. My opponent hasn't pulled one out as well, but I think that assumes that he hasn't got one at this point in the game. Normally it's one of the first cards you play on the first round. Very good card. He's definitely got it in his deck. So at this particular part in the game, he's chose to scorch my Bovine Defense Force, which is a really good play. However, there's some rules that we didn't follow to the letter here, but we didn't know because sometimes we come up against really iffy rules which we're not absolutely certain of, and one of them is the Bovine Defense Force. Now we've put it in the discard pile, but for some reason in The Witcher 3, if it gets scorched or the end of the turn happens, it just disappears. It flitters away into the, into the distance, it just disappears. So it shouldn't have actually gone into my discard pile, but we didn't know that at the time. So that actually, a previous video or two ago, I did mention that you might need like a stockpile of bovine defense forces to pull out and then put in your discard pile and pull out another one, put it in your discard pile if you've got multiple cows or whatever. But that didn't seem to happen because when the end of the round happens, you just throw the bovine defense force back on the stack ready for the next use. So at this point again my opponent Gareth has used his leader ability to pull a card out of my discard pile and at this point he was unsure again whether he's allowed to pull the bovine defense force out because it's not actually a card that you can pick up and use it's like a card which appears like Hearthstone cards. He was really sure that he couldn't use it but I said okay Make the play that you want to play and we'll check the rules later. The rules happen to be he should not have gone into the discard pile, so it should not have been used at all. Um, he pulled out the cow, but again, I'm going to let him choose what he wants to play, um, for fairness, and he will choose the Bovine Defense Force in a moment. But for the future, now we absolutely know that when the Bovine Defense Force gets like removed from the board, it doesn't go into the discard pile, it just leaves. Bye! <laughs> okay, so back on the game. Now earlier, remember the round one? There's so much to talk about in this game that I'm struggling to keep up. In round one, I think I did a bad play. I played a lot of cards, you know, the dwarves and the dandelion, to try and win, which I think will bite me in the ass. As you can see, my card advantage is seven to four to Gareth. So I'm in a really bad spot, and I think that play was one of the main plays which has put me in this spot. So I've just played a four strength minion there. A lot of us, both of us, have got four strength minions in our deck. Now there was a lot of optimization going on in our decks because we both hit the exact 50 strength limit because we both had four strength minions as you can tell like that one it's got nothing special about it whatsoever it's just a four strength minion so what we ended up doing was taking those out and putting Gaunto Dim Darknesses in which are four strength minions as well but they also have the muster ability so it's just added chance so there's a lot of optimization going on a lot of optimization which is really nice but again like I said the decks they which won't change and that's going to be it it's nice for a a change but I don't think this deck uh, limit is good on the whole.
So one thing that's very clear to me is that Nilfgaard so far have had a lot of cards which are unit abilityed, and they're so strong in this uh, this deck limit. Ah, uh, here we go, Guanto Dim. So I actually only have the three Gaunto Dim Darknesses. I don't have the, the Siege Man because I couldn't afford him. Because we, we only had 50 left, you see? And he wasn't worth it most of the time. My opponent only actually has two Darknesses in his own deck because he couldn't afford the third one or the Siege Man. So. It's nice. It's nice to see such optimization going in. A lot of thought went into this. So I've only got one card left, and it's a clear weather. <laughs> so, um, not looking good. Not looking good. So at this particular point, I'm passing, which is obvious. I'm not playing that clear weather because it's only—it's not even hindering me. It's really not hindering him either. But he needs eight strength. This is an area where Nilfgaard's deck ability of drawing still gets him a win is so effective. He's so good at using his card advantage along with his deck ability to absolutely calculate what how many cards he needs to put down and put down the optimal amount it's so annoying but it's so effective I like it well done well played So, at this particular point, I've lost, <laughs> so I place my clear weather and lose, and we get to see what he had left in his hand, and it, I think a lot of it was based on that first round, I put too many cards down to win, but he did have a massive, massive combo there right at the end, that would have been very difficult to beat. I really enjoyed that 50 deck strength limit, but it's only a rarity, I wouldn't play it again because there's not enough variants really. So, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it, see you next time.